There is a person that I like to listen and sometimes talk to a lot. They've always been there. Like, a second point of view on everything I do. They like making me change my mind, making me really think, making me feel, well, insane at times. Does anyone here know someone like that? <laughs> this person is with me everywhere. They're with me in school, at home, in the cafe, in bed, in the bathroom. They're even with me right now. And as I said, they are really nice to talk back to sometimes. But the problem is, they are with me all the time. And sometimes, they speak to me. They would say things that really hurt me, even poison my mind. They would say things like, oh my gosh, Karen, you're so fat. Why are you so desperate? You're so attention seeking. You know the world can live without you, right? How many of you have ever heard these things said to you? That person that I was just talking about, that says all these things, that person is in your head. This person is in all of our heads. They are your best friend and your only enemy. And depending on you, they have many nicknames. Their names can be insecurities, depression, anxiety, pain, struggles. How many of you have ever struggled, not externally, but internally? If so, I can relate. And today I'm gonna stand here with you to help you figure out what to do when the person in their head is making them struggle. Now, my internal struggles have always had a bit of a toll on me. My nicknames for them are insecurity, anxiety, and depression. Now, everyone has insecurities. It's the one thing that kind of plagues us all. My insecurities caused my anxiety. They made me think a lot about people. What do they think of me? What if they think I'm just attention seeking? What if they hate me? What if they pretend to like me? What if I'm annoying? What if this? What if that? You see, my insecurities and my anxiety caused me to think so much and become so cautious that I ended up losing faith in myself. I just didn't love myself anymore. Grade seven was when my anxiety really started taking a toll on me. The person in my head started tweaking things. And now because of these abnormal situations, friends of mine started to avoid me because in their mind, it was unnatural to be feeling this way. Now, it really hurt me to know that people would like leave me at my times of need. So I started self-harming because in my mind, it helped me cope. Now, of course, doing self-harming it caused me to lose even more friends, and even my reputation, which then sparked my depression. So to deal with all of these disappointments, I decided to shut myself out. I shut myself down, I decided to run away and just leave everything behind. I decided to move schools and leave those people who hurt me even more. And I really thought it would be all over after I moved. But then grade 10 rolled around. Grade 10 was a bit of a crazy year for me. I had something called a relapse. The pain, the sadness, you know, the secret thoughts of like giving up, the many distrusting feelings, like an avalanche, it crushed me. And it was really upsetting for me to be having this relapse because I moved for a better life. I moved and finally felt a sense of happiness. I moved and finally had friends. I felt wanted. I ran away from the past to make myself feel better. And now the past had caught up to me. You see, when I was hit with a situation like this, I thought there was only one solution. And that was to give up, let the darkness kind of paint over me. I wanted to die. Fortunately, my friends saw the darkness that had painted over me. They saw that I had changed. So they opened up their arms to me. They decided to help me heal. They helped me go to guidance. They helped me open up to my teacher. I am now in grade 11. And a month ago today, I waited at the bus stop for, for the bus to take me down to the psychiatrist to see if I was to be able to officially diagnose myself or just to be dismissed. It was to me a very big step in my journey. It, everything felt so real, it was amazing. It's supposed to be a good thing, right? Well, 
For once in my life, hours away from my appointment, I have never felt so insecure about my mental health. So ashamed to have waited for so many years to finally start healing. The appointment wasn't terrible. I managed to meet a lot of nice people. I am learning better coping strategies. I'm taking medicine and I'm even going to a therapist. The thing is, I look back on my story a lot because there is a mistake that I made and it really unsettles me. That mistake was not healing my anxiety, my insecurities earlier, for not fixing the internal struggles that obviously affected me physically. Think about it, I could have died. So for me to not fix myself at that time was me risking my life. I risked my life listening to those who were not me who thought that my internal struggles shouldn't be affecting the way people physically live. So I stand here today telling you my internal struggles and I am not the only one because I guarantee you that in this crowd there is someone just like me who is internally hurting and trying to get hurt. So people are going to be asking me, what do you want me to do? What now? Well, I want you to start opening up. I want everyone to become a community and to start sharing their internal struggles, to no longer kind of hide in silence. I want people to open up their pain to other people. I want people to research coping strategies, like working out, which is scientifically proven to help people with anxiety and to help people feel better about themselves, externally and internally. I want people to lend a hand. If someone comes up to you to talk to them, if someone comes up to you and talks to you about their internal struggles, don't brush them off. Cheer them on from the sidelines. Tell them they are not alone. Relate to them. Help them realize people that can help them as well. Tell them to trust their own gut because you are you and only you know how you're feeling. Overall, I want people to listen because sometimes that's all someone needs. Because sometimes listening can do more than what actions can do. Yes, what I'm saying sounds easier said than done. But the small steps that you take in life can make a great difference in the world. I have taken my step by sharing you my story and my thoughts. It is now your turn. Thank you.